Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make organic and textured music like George Fitzgerald. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, all of that from this video, the presets as well, are available all at the top of the description, and if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. We're at 120 BPM, and the first sound that we have here are these plot chords, which sound like this. So what's happening here is it's actually a very simple chord progression. It's just going B major, then down to G sharp minor, and then up to D sharp minor. So we're just going like that. It's a pretty simple chord progression, but then what's happening here, as you can actually see, these are just basic major and minor triads. But then what I've done is I've taken the min the thirds, so the middle note essentially, and I've just put them up two octaves. So you get this kind of cool like split chord this way. And this is done a lot in this style of music. Like it's not just George Fitzgerald that does this. I've heard this in a ton of other producers' music. And then up here is actually the same thing where you can see this one. What I did instead is it's just I took the fifth, so the last note. I'm putting up an octave, and then I added this note on top just because it sounded good. So yeah, pretty simple chord progression, like I said. It's just a matter of like, you know, making it sound nice by spreading out the chords across the keyboard. And just having like a nice rhythm with it as well. For the sound, this one is made with analog. So what it is, is two square waves. I have the first one set like this, and then the second one is actually an octave and seven semitones up. You can see I also have a pitch envelope on that, and we have some noise. So here's just the first oscillator. And then with the second one. So that's adding a bit of complexity to the sound as well. Just having that playing an octave and a fifth up from the first one. You know, it creates a lot of vibe in the sound. And it adds some musical stuff too to make it a bit more complex versus if we just put it like... You know, it's a little bit more flat. So then we have cool technique there. Then everything is going into the low pass filter which has this envelope on it. That's how we're getting the actual pluck. I've got the amp envelope set like this and then we just have a bit of vibrato. And that's it for inside of the synth. From there I have this echo, which you can see is actually just on this really fast time, and then I have some reverb. So there's without that. And with it, so it just brings the sound to life, you know, it gives it a bit of space, but it's not so much to where it's taking up the whole mix, you know, this is very... You know, you're not hearing like a bunch of long delays, you're just hearing this quick like... And a bit of space and just kind of life added onto the sound. Then we have a drum bus, which is fattening this up. This really helps to kind of beef up your synth chords like this and make them feel really full. Here's without it. You can hear it's just kind of, you know, it's still the sound, but it's a bit flat. But then with it, it gives it some warmth and some fatness. And, you know, it makes it really feel like a powerful analog synth. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter cutting out the lows. And that's it for the pluck chords. Then we have this pad. So you can hear this is creating this sort of like very melancholic, sort of like dark minor sounding thing, which plays really nicely over the chord progression. So what's happening here is this track would technically be in D sharp minor just based on like where that chord lands and how it feels in the song. But what we're doing here is we're playing with this B major. That's the chord that the that the track is starting on, you can see. And we're just doing this sort of like major thing where the root note changes, it goes from B 
down to A sharp. So that's creating like kind of that sad stuff. And then we just have these notes droning over top and we add in this D sharp here. So it's really just kind of notes that are in the scale of D sharp minor. And then just creating something nice with that that's gonna fit well. And this is another thing to really add some musical like kind of texture to the track. Because now you're not just hearing the chord progression. Which of course does sound good on its own, but you're hearing it in context with something else that is kind of like doing a bit of a different feel. And like I said, it's just going to add that much more complexity to your track without actually having to add too much stuff and make the track too full. For the sound with this one, it is made with FM synthesis. So this is a pretty standard FM pad. You can see I'm using operator here and we have four sine waves. Just creating this cool sort of like textured sound. That's like the dry sound. So you can hear it's very similar to a saw wave or a square wave. It's very harmonically rich, but it's a bit more interesting. And then I put that through a low pass filter so it becomes a bit deeper. And yeah, and then we just have a bit of chorus and some reverb, giving the sound some space. And then I have this ultimate stereo widening rack here. This is something I made a little bit ago, actually. And this is just meant to spread the sound out. Here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear it's subtle, but it just gives it that perfect amount of stereo width to, like, spread it out. And this really helps to put this in a different place in the mix, too. So it stands out and doesn't just get kind of covered up by the other elements. And yeah, and then I just have this auto pan on here, just giving it sort of like that quarter note pulse, so it's bouncing off of the kick. And then finally, I just have a high pass filter cutting off the lows, making sure that this isn't gonna get in the way of the kick or the bass or anything like that. And that's it for the pad. And then we have this vocal. <laughs> So all this is, is it's just this nice little vocal sample. These are used a lot in, in George Fitzgerald's music and in general in this style of music. Just having this vocal thing. Even if it's just little stabs like this, adds a lot to the track because this is very synth heavy music. And the truth is, people just don't connect as much to synth music as they do to music that has like somebody singing or somehow like a voice to it and it's just based on the fact that you know not everybody can program a synth to sound like this but anybody could go and kind of sing along and so it's giving you a more human touch and this is really really powerful you know this is really the difference between somebody liking a track and somebody really getting into a track and really being able to feel it is like that human touch so if you're making this style of music vocals are very important to do that otherwise you know you might be able to make the coolest synth textures in the world but it's only going to be interesting to people who care about synth music versus the vocal is the thing that can really transcend the synths and you know make something that is popular with everybody and all this is, is just this one vocal stab. And then over here, I just took it and I put it down minus 2. So originally it's at minus 5, and then it's at minus 7 here. So minus 2 from the original. But then I reversed it, so we just get that little... And yeah, it's a nice way to get a little bit more mileage out of one vocal sample. But then, for the sound with this one, so here's with no processing. And then with it. So you can see it's very simple. All we have here is I just have this bandpass filter just to kind of make it, you know, a bit deeper. I have a slight LFO on that as well, which gives it some movement and makes it feel more alive. Then we have this echo just giving it, you can see it's like that really fast delay, just like I had on the pluck chords. And I've got some reverb as well, and we're on the ping pong setting. And then we just have some drum bus, which just fattens it up, brings out in the mix a bit more, and gives it that last, like, kind of push. And this also brings out the echo and reverb, too. Like, if you're having a hard time, and, you know, maybe you can hear the vocal in the mix, but the reverb just gets buried, try putting some saturation or drum bus or something like that afterwards, because that can really bring out that echo and reverb and make it fit a lot better into the track. 
And then after that, we have the kick. So this kick's really straightforward. The main thing to keep in mind here is just like, it's a bit of a deeper kick than you would usually go for with like a more standard like house track or like minimal house or something like that. You know, it's just this more like, it's more about just having like a really, really fat null end. While still having a lot of punch, you know, you don't want it to just be all doom. You still need some like click on top of that too. And I just have a bit of drum bust on that, so here's without that. And with it, it just gives it that extra push. Uh, yeah, and then we have the bass line. And so for the notes on this one, it's just following the same thing as the chord progression. It's even the same rhythm. The interesting thing with this sound is it's not the most plucky sound. But having it still play that like boom, 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 even if it is like long held out notes, just gives it a bit more intensity. And yeah, this one's really simple. It's just what we would call a re-space. So a re-space is made with just two saw waves and then they're detuned a little bit and then you put it through a low pass filter. So without the low pass and then with it. And then we have the amp envelope set like this. This is like set like this so that you can actually hear that pluck. When it goes boom, 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 like that. And yeah, and then we just have it going through a bit of drum bust to beef it up. So here's without that. And then with it. And then I have the kick and the bass in a group together, you know. This is just really for mixing kind of purposes. You can see we actually don't even need to do any processing, you know. With this style, you don't need like the hardest slamming kick. But what this is doing is it helps to kind of, you know, generalize the low end. So what I mean by this is it's not always just about putting processing on them, but it's about kind of keeping the low end in a similar place in the mix. So if you're turning these up, you know, one by one, like if we're just going on the side here and just turning this down, say, minus three, but keeping the bass at the same place, your low end is going to kind of lose that synergy pretty quickly because you're just not really treating it as one. You're treating them as two separate things. However, if you put these in a group together and just kind of focus on like just really turning the group volume up and down to mix this, you're going to get a lot cleaner and more focused mix. And yeah, that's a really good gem in terms of just like getting your low end to sound right. You know, it's not always about processing it together, although that is going to do a lot of it. In the case of this track, you can see like we didn't need to do that, but just having it set up in a way where while you're mixing it, you're treating them as one, it's going to make a huge difference. And yeah, and then we have the percussion, which starts with this rim shot. So this is your standard sort of rim shot like you hear in the style, you know, very mid-rangey, very punchy. This one's just going through a bit of drum bust. The main thing with this is just the type of sound, you know, it's a very particular rim shot because a lot of rim shot samples are just too soft. Like if you just have like a little, it's not really gonna work. You really need that like, like hard hitting, punchy rim shot like this. And it's kind of deceiving too. I feel like a lot of times when you listen to this music, it doesn't always sound like that. Like it sounds like they're using tiny samples, but they're actually using really big samples and then just mixing it in a way where it doesn't feel so big. So yeah, I've got that. And then we have this open hi hat. You can see I'm just going through a bit of reverb. And this one kind of just comes down to the type of sound you're choosing as well. You know, just like more mid-rangey. Not like a big 909 hi-hat or anything. Very organic and live feeling like this. While still having some punch. Then we have the ride, which is just kind of underneath that. So you can hear what that's doing. It's very quiet in the mix, but it just adds that little like sizzle onto the hi-hat. And then we have sort of like this percussion stuff down here. So you can hear what's happening is we have this one tambourine just going constantly like this. And then we have these little sounds that are bouncing in and out. So these are just this one closed hi-hat. And then these two little Foley percussions, and you can hear, I'm playing with these kind of like all over the place. Like with this first one, it's pretty rigid, but with the second one, you can see. 
It's actually almost playing like a melody if you listen to it on its own. But it just creates this very lively sort of animated... Sort of percussion like this, and you don't so much notice it like when you're hearing the track that it's just one sound pitching around, you know, it ends up just sounding like you have a bunch of different percussion in here that's very fluid. Like a big part with getting this more organic sound is making your percussion sound like it's not just like program, but like it's really got like some life to it and it's you know moving and changing. And a lot of times, you know, just having like two cool foley sounds like this and then pitching one of them around can do a lot for that. And yeah, and then in the group of all that percussion, we just have a bit of drum bus and some EQ. So here's without these. And with them. So again, it's like, if you listen to this percussion on its own, you can hear it. It's all very big. It's hitting pretty hard. It's pretty loud. But then when you listen to it in the mix, it's not always going to stand out that way. But you definitely want to always shoot for like making the sounds as big as possible. And you know, another big thing with this style is the overall texture of the sounds. Like it can be very hard to find different percussions and put them together like this and make it feel really together. And this is actually a lot more of what does that than it is like the sound selection. Like the sound selection, you just need to find really good sounds that fit the aesthetic you're going for. This is what's actually gonna make them kind of feel like they're in the same world, so to speak, because you're putting them all through the exact same saturation and the exact same EQ, so they're gonna get a very similar texture just by virtue of that. And the last thing down here is we just have a bit of vinyl noise. So yeah, super straightforward. This just adds like some nice, that last little bit of texture to the mix. You know, and it also adds some high end too. Here's without it. And then with it, you can hear actually like having that over top of everything. Again, just gives everything a little bit more like brightness and texture in the mix. And yeah, so that is it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video. It's available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much for all the support on the sample packs lately, guys. You know, not making a whole lot off of YouTube. But with the sample packs, I'm able to keep going and keep making you guys awesome new content every day. And teaching you guys new stuff. And yeah, so thank you so much everybody for all the support lately. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.